What's going on everybody? Welcome to Taiwan On. Today, we're doing beef ribs on the Traeger pellet grill. If you're new here, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel. It's completely free, it doesn't cost anything at all, and it's the best way to support our channel and it helps us grow. And the more people subscribe, like, and comment on our videos, it helps our videos and our channel get recommended to other viewers that like this similar content. We would really appreciate it and it would help us out a lot. So to start off, you see we have this thick white layer of fat right here. This layer of white fat. So this is hard fat that will not render down when you're smoking. So this will need to be trimmed off. And so what you want to do, I have a fillet knife, so you want something with, that's sharp with a flexible blade. That way you can get down flat on this meat to trim that off because you don't want to cut into your actual good meat. You want to make sure it's all flat and even that way it cooks, it cooks even. So let's get to trimming this off. When you trim, you want to just take it real, real light layers off and don't go too deep. I hear the dog out back. He's getting excited for some beef ribs too. He's done learning when that smoker's on. Some good food's coming. And look at that, look at that marbling. All right, this is my first time ever smoking these beef ribs. Um, so hopefully this attempt will, it'll come out fine. This side looks thicker than this one. So that hopefully that won't, uh, Affect the cook a whole lot, but today we're using Oak Ridge Barbecue's Carne Crosta Steakhouse Rub. It's got some coffee bean in it and it gives it a, um, a really deep, rich flavor that goes really well with beef. Before you put your rub on, um, some people use a binder, some people don't. You can use mustard, olive oil. You know, so I've even seen some people use Worcestershire. But today I'm going to use some olive oil and just want to put a light coat on there. You can give some type of moisture to let that rub adhere to it. And I have this butcher paper here that I'm going to wrap uh, later on in the cook. I prefer to use butcher paper instead of foil because butcher paper will preserve your bark that you have. You know, foil will speed up the cook and lock a lot of moisture in there and it'll, it'll really put a lot of moisture in your bark. So I prefer to use butcher paper. And if you're going to use butcher paper, you got to make sure it's non-waxed, non-waxed butcher paper. I get this. This is the Reynolds brand. Uh, unfortunately, my Walmart here sells these. So that's the key. Butcher paper is the key. All right, there we have it. I hope y'all can hear me all right. I apologize if not, it's really windy outside. We've got a storm brewing up later today. So hopefully the wind won't affect my cook at all, but that rubs nice and adhere to the meat. The smoker's set to 225. It's got a nice thin blue smoke. It doesn't have that dirty white smoke. You want, a thin, you want that thin blue smoke. That's your good smoke. Gonna set them on there right there like that. So now that we have that on, we're gonna let that cook. We're gonna come out every hour or so, check on it, maybe spritz it with our apple juice if we need to, keep it moist and drying out. We'll see y'all here in a little while. Alright, so it's been about two and a half, three hours since we put it on. Looking good. Some of that meat starting to pull back off the bone already. Give a little spritz on it. Hit it with some apple juice. Oh man, it smells so good. I'm making, I'm cooking this in the, the same exact method that I do my brisket, so I'm hoping for some really good results. We'll come back next time and uh, we're gonna wrap it up. All right, so it's been a few hours. We've been spritzing it. An instant read thermometer is your best friend when it comes to smoking. We're going to check our temps and see if we need to wrap it. So it's getting close to 160 already. When I do brisket, I wrap my briskets about 160, 170 degrees also in butcher paper. It's non-waxed butcher paper. Remember, it's got to be non-waxed. I have glove liners in my gloves to protect from the heat. So don't just grab it with your hands and burn yourself. I 
got that wrapped up, we're gonna put it back on and we're gonna let it go to probably 205, 210, or until it's probe tender. We'll be back in a couple more hours. So we had to crank her up to 275. Look at all the juices coming out of there. Fat's rendering down nicely. It's probe tender. It's about 205. And this boudin's ready to come off too. So we're gonna get you some towels or an old blank or anything like that. And when you go to rest these ribs or any kind of brisk or any kind of meat, wrap it in a towel, old blank or something, throw it in a cooler. After about an hour or two, we'll be ready to go. So we're gonna pull these off and we'll see you back here in just a little while after it's been rested and we're gonna cut into it. Here we are. It's the moment of truth. Good God. <laughs> Look at that bones, how it pulled off of that meat. Feels juicy and tender. <laughs> Guess that's what you wanna see right there. Pretty tender. Mm. All right, well, we cooked it at 225 for a few hours, spritzed it in with apple juice, wrapped it in butcher paper, turned it up to 275, pushed it through a stall, and we poured it at about 205 and let it rest for a little over an hour. My wife's done got the sides prepared, so I'm waiting long enough. We're going to go ahead and tear into this. If you watched it all the way to the end and you're new here, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It's free. It doesn't cost anything at all, and it's the best way to support our channel. And leaving likes and comments on the video also helps this video get recommended to other viewers. We'll see y'all next time.